Here's how to pick a good character and vehicle combo in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The final update has arrived, so this guide should be all you need to create your perfect combo for the rest of time. Let's start simple. What is the best combo in the game? For most people, if you don't want to think too hard, go with Yoshi, Teddy Buggy, Roller, and Paper Glider. Or swap out for any of these, since they have the same stats. Yoshi Teddy is the most popular combo online, and the majority of high-level Mario Kart players will tell you this is the best. This combo is also pretty easy to use at all levels, since it has high acceleration, handling, traction, and the hidden mini turbo stat. This combo also holds a lot of world records in both 150cc and 200cc. Now, if you've been out of the game for a while, you might be wondering what happened to this guy. Well, in early 2023, Nintendo buffed the Teddy Buggy and double buffed Yoshi because casual players thought this guy was ugly. The best combo in the game for new players is just anything with high acceleration and high handling. For example, Baby Mario on Streetle, Roller, and Parachute, which you don't need to unlock to be able to use. This also comes with a high mini turbo stat, which is a hidden stat. And the mini turbo stat helps you go fast, even more than the speed stat does, so don't worry, you can win with this even though the speed stat is low. This combination of stats makes this combo easy to use, but it has a low potential. Okay, that's all you really need to know. Now you can go play Mario Kart and not sit around for 5 hours optimizing your combo when you can't even take a shortcut without touching grass. But what if you want to know how to build a good combo? In that case, let's answer these questions. How do we know if a combo is good? Why is Yoshi Teddy Buggy considered the best? How can we design a good combo that works for you? And what is the best combo for each character? How do you know if a combo is good? In order to answer this question, we need to talk about stats. Not all characters, vehicles, tires, and gliders were created equal. At the vehicle select screen, you can press the pause button to view the stats, but this is not complete, as there are more hidden stats. There are actually four different stats for speed and for handling. There is a hidden invincibility stat and a hidden mini turbo stat, which is arguably the most important stat in the game. Thanks, Nintendo! Here's a spreadsheet of all the stats. I know it looks scary, it looks complicated, but we're gonna make it really simple. And if you want to find this sheet, it is linked in the description. Let's talk about how important each stat is, so you know which stats to focus on when building a combo. We'll do this with a stats tier list. In the S tier, we have the mini turbo stat. If you drift for long enough to build sparks on your tires, ending your drift will give you a short speed boost called a mini turbo. The mini turbo stat determines the time it takes to charge a mini turbo, the length of time of your mini turbo, and the speed increase that your mini turbo gives you. The mini turbo stat is so important, especially with optimized drifting techniques, that the lowest speed combo can stay ahead of the highest speed combo, all thanks to the mini turbo stat. You might think this only applies to curvy roads, but slow combos can actually keep up on straight paths thanks to snaking. Also in S tier, we have the speed stat, specifically ground speed. This stat determines the maximum speed you can go, not only when driving normally, but also when you are in any speed boost item, including mushrooms and the bullet bill. So if you need to make a comeback, the speed stat is your best friend. In the A tier, we have acceleration. Acceleration determines how quickly you can increase your speed. Anytime you get hit, you want acceleration to help get your speed back. This sounds like the best thing ever, and it is actually a very important stat for beginners. But the better you get at this game, the less you'll be getting hit, thanks to good defensive play. Or if you do get hit, you will often have a mushroom to instantly speed up. Or you can just slow down for a little bit and plan a comeback for later. The acceleration stat is still important, but we can use skill and strategy to avoid needing it so much. Also in A tier, we have anti-gravity speed bonus. When you drive on anti-gravity, your tires will turn sideways, and the game will use your anti-gravity speed stat instead of your ground speed stat. Anti-gravity is not on every track, but it's on a lot of tracks, and it will give you a significant advantage if you have a high speed bonus. And what I mean by bonus is your anti-gravity speed compared to your ground speed. For example, the Teddy Buggy and Streetle have the same ground speed, but on anti-gravity, the Teddy Buggy has a bonus of plus 1 speed, while the Streetle gets minus 2 speed. In B tier, we have everything else. Traction, invincibility, glider speed, and water speed matter so rarely that it's generally not worth optimizing for these stats. 
Now, if you're doing time trials, then yes, there are times where you will want to optimize for traction on Slippery Road, glider speed on Rock Rock Mountain, or water speed on a water track, but not water park, because that's anti-gravity. But most of the time, these stats do not matter. Handling determines how sharply you can turn, and weight determines the distance that you get bumped by other racers. These stats come into play very frequently, but with such little importance that they will almost never affect the outcome of a race. Handling does matter when you're learning the game, but not much after that. And finally, we have the two bonus hidden stats. These are not exactly real stats, but they do affect things. Hitbox size is how large your vehicle is. You are more likely to get hit by attack items if you are playing in a larger vehicle. Your hitbox size is affected by which vehicle and tires you choose, and which character you choose. There are three vehicle sizes, and each character drives either a small, medium, or large version of a vehicle. Visibility is a stat that applies mainly to gliders. Earlier, you may have noticed the best combo uses either the paper glider or the cloud glider even though the Parachute and Flower Glider have the exact same stats. This is because the Paper and Cloud Glider let you see in front of you better. Another factor for visibility is your character choice. Dodging a banana peel with PD Piranha has never happened in the history of this game. Okay, there's your stats tier list. Now what can we do with this? There's a reason I've split up the stats into these specific tiers, so you can follow this rule. If you want to create a good combo, never sacrifice a stat from one tier in order to gain stats from a lower tier. For example, you should not pick the Wild Wiggler, because the Teddy Buggy exists. Compared to the Teddy Buggy, you are sacrificing Mini Turbo, an S tier stat, in order to gain Anti-Gravity Speed, an A tier stat, and that is not worth it. But if you pick the Streetle, that's fine, as you are just trading off Anti-Gravity Speed for Acceleration, which are both A tier stats. Using the Ink Striker is also fine as you're trading off Mini Turbo for Speed, which are both S tier stats. This also applies to picking an entire combo. For example, it is not optimal to play Mario Bitty Buggy Roller, because Yoshi Teddy Roller already exists and has better S tier stats, so we don't even need to look at the other stats to know that Yoshi Teddy Roller is better. Now that we understand the importance of each stat and what makes a combo good, let's see if we can figure out why Yoshi Teddy Buggy Roller and Paper Glider is considered by most people to be the best combo in the game. Once again, here are the stats, and remember, we're not going to look at every single number because this is way too much to take in. Let's take a look at the S tier stats, Mini Turbo and Ground Speed. Remember that Mini Turbo and Ground Speed are about equally important, so I've added an extra column here to show the sum of these two numbers for each character. As you can see, the lightweights are missing these stats, but as you get to the middleweights and heavyweights, then we have a lot of these stats. This number is not perfectly representative of how good each character is, but it is very accurate. Now, the highest speed plus mini turbo we can get is 10, so we can look at the A tier stats acceleration and anti-gravity in order to break the tie. Just like with the S tier stats, let's add another column that adds the acceleration and anti-gravity speed bonus for each character. For example, this group of characters has 3 acceleration and 0 anti-gravity speed bonus because it's the same thing as ground speed. And in fact, every single character has a 0 anti-gravity speed bonus. So really, this column is just acceleration again. So if we look at every character that has a 10 in their S tier stats, and then we compare their A tier stats, it seems like the Yoshi group is the best. Now, Tanuki Mario has the same S tier and A tier stats. Looking past A tier stats is not that important, but if we had to do it, we can see that Tanuki Mario has a weight advantage over Yoshi by one point, but Yoshi has two more traction than Tanuki Mario. It hardly matters at this point, but most people prefer the traction, therefore most people prefer Yoshi. Now, if we head over to the vehicles, the stats look a lot more convoluted and confusing, but we're just going to focus on these two columns again. We find the highest number in the S tier column, which is 8, and then, out of the 8s, we pick the one with the highest number in the A tier column. And if we take a quick look, we can see that the highest number is 6, when the S tier column is 8. And that is the Teddy Buggy. For tires, we'll do the same thing. S tier, they're all tied at 6. A tier, 
we only have two at six and everything else is not quite as good, so we have the roller tires and button tires both being very good. It hardly matters at this point, but if we had to say which one of these is better, we can then go look at the extra stats. Roller has much higher water and glider speed bonuses, it has one more handling, it has one more traction, and it has three less invincibility. Again, it's up to you what's more important out of those stats, but I think it's pretty clear that Roller is better. For gliders, they're all tied for S tier, but A tier stats are better for these two groups. So these two glider groups are about equally as good, but if we had to say which one's better, the Cloud Glider group has an extra water speed bonus, it's missing one weight, the handling is not really important, and it has one more traction. It's up to you what's more important, but I think that makes the Cloud Glider group better. And with that, we have shown why Yoshi, Teddy Buggy, Roller, and Paper Glider is the most popular combo in the game. Now, this process might seem very simple and reductive. I mean, we're just looking at two numbers, so can we really trust it? Well, let's quickly take a look at the old stats from before the 2023 balance update to see what we find. Keep in mind that the two most popular combos at that time were Waluigi Wiggler and Waluigi Bitty Buggy, both on Roller and Paper Glider. Alright, best character? Waluigi. Best Vehicle, Bitty Buggy and Wild Wiggler. Best Tires, Roller, for the same reason I said earlier. Best Glider, Paper Glider, for the same reason I said earlier. So yes, this process is simple and reductive and accurate. But wait, it says here that the Bitty Buggy was better than the Wild Wiggler. Then why was everyone playing the Wild Wiggler? In a game, the meta, short for metagame, is the most popular and effective strategy that good players use to win. The meta combo used to be Waluigi Wiggler, and after the stats got changed, now it's Yoshi Teddy, but there is also a meta racing strategy. Okay, we're talking about how to build a good combo, so why am I bringing up racing strategy? Well, stick with me here, because this is actually very important knowledge for when you choose your own combo. There are two big racing strategies in Mario Kart. Running, which is just driving forward the whole race, and cheating, I, I mean bagging, which is staying at the back to secure better items and 10 coins, and then using speed items and shortcuts to make a comeback later in the race, you absolute degenerate. The best way to win consistently is to use a combination of running and bagging and switching between them depending on the situation. I'll save most of the details for my pro guide coming out soon, but for now, just know that each strategy has different requirements for it to be effective. For running to be a good strategy, here's what you want. A good combination of stats for running. This would be mini turbo at the most important, and then speed, and then acceleration. You want there to be not a lot of baggers. The shock and blue shell are two items that are disproportionately bad for the people that are running. You can only get these items if you're far enough away from first place by distance, and the more people that are bagging, the more likely that these items come into play and mess up your running. And finally, you want a track with minimal shortcuts. This way it's harder for people to pass you using their items. For bagging to be a good strategy, you need a good combination of stats for bagging. This would be speed at the most important, and then mini turbo, and then acceleration. To make a comeback, you really only need speed, but the best opportunity to make a comeback may happen in the middle of the race, and then you'll be running for the rest of that race. And without enough mini turbo, this is not going to work. So you still need these stats to be good at bagging. And then you want lots of baggers. When other people get the shock or blue shell, it makes it less likely that you get it. And this is a good thing, because you still get to benefit from that item without having to waste a slot when you could have a speed item. And finally, you want a track with lots of shortcuts. In the old meta, this was our best running combo, which was not that great, so lots of people were bagging. And if lots of people are bagging, then that makes running even worse. So everyone figured if we're gonna be bagging anyway, we might as well pick a higher speed for a bigger advantage. After the stat change update in 2023, this is our best running combo, which is amazing. Running is now better, so fewer people are bagging. That makes running even better. And then Nintendo slightly nerfed bagging. Running is broken, and here's your best running combo. Okay, bagging is still highly viable depending on which track you get. I mean, you're never gonna see me seriously running on Cheeseland, but the dominance of each strategy has definitely shifted towards running, which is why everyone has converged on the best running combo. Now, it's easy to assume that everyone picks the same combo because nobody has a brain, and Shortcat picks different combos, so he is a free thinker. That part is true, 
but I hope you can now see why there is a strategic advantage to being a sheep. The best combos determine how effective each strategy is, and the more people that use a strategy, the better it is to also use that strategy. That last part is usually not true for most games, but it is true in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and that's why there is a definitive meta that people tend to follow, and that's why King Boo cannot make it in this meta. But there's just one problem. You will not encounter the meta. At least, probably not for a while. What I mean by this is unless you're cracked at this game and playing competitive Mario Kart with top players, you're probably not going to be playing against a room full of great players on Yoshi Teddy. So you, my friend, do not need to follow the meta to win. You can design your own combo based on your own preferences, and if done well, you will do better on this combo than you would on the combo that everyone says is the best. For example, if you refuse to do any bagging whatsoever, and you just want to drive forward, this combo is better than the meta. If you prefer to strategize and use bagging to make hype comebacks, this combo is better than the meta. Do you want to have an unreasonable advantage on anti-gravity tracks while still being great on regular tracks? I got you! Just want to win on Rock Rock Mountain? Okay, don't be that guy. There is actually a lot of freedom in designing your own combo, getting used to it, and then building your playstyle around it. And I just have one piece of extra advice, try not to let your mini turbo stat drop too low. How low is too low? In my opinion, around 13 or 14 is the minimum. Any lower and you'll have to start playing differently because of how long it takes to charge mini turbos. If you've watched me play any high speed combo in the last few months, you'll notice I have an entirely different playstyle and decision making process when I play these combos. These combos are not that bad, but they are really tough to get used to, and if you play them the same way you play the best combos, you're not going to have a good time. But if you adapt your playstyle, they can be fun. What is the best combo for each character? This is a very common question I get, and I hate to say it, but some characters are just not as good as other characters. I hope in the next Mario Kart game we can have character stats not matter too much so I can play as Toad in peace. But if you have a favorite character, and you have to use that character, which combo is the best for them? Well, if we follow the same logic from before, it's Teddy Buggy Roller Paper Glider. Yeah, sorry to be a downer, but that's what we've always been working with. But if you are trying to rep your favorite underrated character, I know you. You're above stats. You're about looking awesome. And sending a message by winning, which you still kind of need good stats for. But don't worry, I understand, and I've got you covered. Here is a really good combo for each character that I think you will love. And you guessed it, not a single one of these combos uses Teddy Buggy. If you play one of these combos, you get to look good, intimidate the entire room, and you can trust me that for this character, you are not missing out on stats and you have the potential to do very well. While that plays on the right, here's a quick reference to help you in your journey to building a combo. Here are all the characters and parts that you can pretty much mix and match any way you want, and you are guaranteed to end up with a good combo. But again, try to avoid picking too many parts with low mini turbo, because this makes your combo a lot harder to play. In the stats sheet, I have a section where you can choose which parts you want and it displays the full stats. This way, you can easily compare it to other combos. To do this though, you will need to make a copy of the sheet, and honestly, for seeing the stats of a full combo, I recommend this website instead, which is also linked in the description. It's not my website, but I like to use it to compare stats. Now, there are two things I did not mention the whole video, so I'll address them here. Bouncy tires! Cushion tires, monster tires, and hot monster tires are bouncy. What this means is when you land from a jump, they may get airtime and mess with your drift. Overall, this is not a big deal, but it does make these tires harder to use and worse on some tracks. They can definitely surprise you with the bounce because you either jump way higher than usual, or you try to drift and you get no jump at all. Now, this is not a huge deal. It does not mean these tires are unviable. It just means that if you care about playing consistently and optimally, you should not pick these tires. And finally, inward drifting bikes. There are four types of vehicles in this game, cart, ATV, bike, and sport bike, also known as inward drifting bike. Carts, ATVs, and normal bikes are pretty much all identical besides how your character looks driving them, and they all have outward drift. This means you slide sideways when drifting. On the vehicle select screen, if you see this icon, you have chosen an inward drifting bike. 
While drifting, these do a turn instead of a slide. I have a video covering the differences between inward drift and outward drift, which I will link in the description. But in general, outward drifting vehicles are better. Inward drift bikes have some advantages and are viable, but they cannot do all the same techniques that most of the vehicles can do. Click here if you want to see inward drift in action or learn how to get better at Mario Kart. Thanks for watching!